It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Larry Lasseur of the CBS television news staff and Kenneth Crawford, national affairs editor of Newsweek magazine. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable John J. Williams, United States Senator from Delaware. Uh, Senator Williams, uh, you're best known as a one-man crusader against corruption in government. Do you think they've uh, now cleaned up what they call the mess in Washington? I wouldn't say that they have cleaned it up, but I will say that they're uh, making great strides. Uh, it's a rather long and tedious job. Uh, after these cases are exposed, they have to be presented to the grand juries, and then they've got to go through the orderly process of being tried in the courts. But uh, they are uh, moving along rapidly, and I think are doing, the, doing a good job toward cleaning it up, yes. Senator, you're uh, best known for your work in <coughs> cleaning up the Internal Revenue Bureau. Uh, how did you get interested in that? Well, back uh, in 1949, it was uh, a gentleman came to my office uh, uh, with a rather fantastic story, it seemed at that time, but uh, he outlined what uh, uh, reasons which convinced him that we had operating in this country an organized tax fix ring. And uh, as it was described at that time, uh, certain members of the underworld and along with the political favorites, were able to fix their taxes in a manner different from what you and I. And uh, he, the gentleman, uh, had uh, a good bit of the facts, enough that I was able to move into the case. And it turned out that way, didn't it? It turned out that way, yes, definitely. Well, Senator, when you investigated the Internal Revenue Bureau, did you discover uh, just favoritism, or was it plain stealing? Some of both. Uh, the uh, record that was put out by the past commissioner, I haven't seen the recent tabulation, but uh, Commissioner Dunlap put out a, a report in uh, the early part of 1952 uh, in which he uh, listed that since these exposures had started in the Treasury Department alone, there had been 174 uh, Treasury officials who had been dismissed with charges. And uh, included among that list, there were 53 that were charged with accepting bribes for fixing tax returns. Uh, 21 of the gentlemen were uh, c indicted for failing to pay any income taxes of their own. Now remember, these were Treasury agents. And uh, three of them were uh, convicted for operating what, uh, in effect, uh, uh, constituted a blackmail ring. They admitted that they were faking false uh, claims and false charges of fraud against what they described as timid taxpayers and shaking them down for a payoff. And 24 of them have gone, been jailed for taking bribes for fixing the tax returns of the nation's biggest racketeers. Senator, when you got into this, did you get, uh, did you get help from the honest employees in the, uh, in the Bureau? And yes, uh, yes, uh, I did. And uh, I would like to say at this point that uh, I, I'm more convinced now than I was even when I started that the overwhelming majority of the government employees uh, even in the Treasury Department or any other, are honest and are trying to do the job. And actually, like Senator, those who are want the others caught. They do, and they, they resent it. It's a reflection on them as well as a uh, uh, reflection on the, the service, and uh, they resented it. Well, Senator Williams, when you got started in your investigation of the Internal Revenue Bureau, weren't you actually accused of being delinquent in taxes, too? Yes, uh, and uh, that was, but that had nothing to do, I don't think, with this particular case because... Uh, uh, in our own state, uh, my, uh, one of my uh, payments was, uh, it was uh, taken out, uh, but that gentleman was convicted for embezzlement in late 1948, I think it was. Was he just getting after senators, you think? No, uh, no, I don't think so. At the time that he took mine, I'm sure that he never dreamed any more than a lot of the rest of them that I would ever be in the Senate, and I certainly did not know anything about it at the time. Uh, it, uh, uh, when we got to checking that particular office, uh, naturally, the fact that he tapped my own account uh, helped expedite the uh, disclosure. Uh, but uh, I don't think it had any connection with the later developments except this, uh, the lack of cooperation that I got from the executive branch in Washington in, in cleaning up that situation. 
caused me to be a little suspicious in general, and I wasn't too hard to sell on the idea that there was something wrong when, in 1949, about uh, six or eight months later, this man came down with that story, because otherwise I think I would have thought it was a little too fantastic. Bad thing to pick on a man who's going to be a senator, isn't it? Well, it's Particularly bad. if you don't know it. Well, it's, yes, it's bad to pick on most anybody. I guess it was the wrong thing to have done. Well, Senator, didn't you feel that the uh, Treasury Department uh, uh, aided your investigations with any alacrity, or they just hold back? No, uh, I have said that, uh, uh, that I, I received uh, no, no cooperation as far as the uh, executive branch or the Treasury Department of the past administration. In fact, uh, what was exposed was done in spite of them and not as a result of any cooperation I had. Uh, they, uh, uh, you want to remember that I had no investigating staff. It was done uh, largely as a result of this information which was brought to my office. Of course, when you get started, other information comes in. But every practically every disclosure that I put on the floor of the Senate, and uh, I think they all stood up, uh, and most of them in the courts, uh, subsequently, but practically every one of them were taken from the files of the Treasury Department itself, and uh, uh, from their own reports, which they could have moved on in and prosecuted if they'd seen fit to do it. Well, Senator, do you think they're trying to muzzle you now by passing this rule in the, uh, in the Finance Committee that uh, only uh, uh, investigations which are by a full... Uh, a vote of the majority of the committee shall be publicized? I think it's wrong. I protested it and refused to serve on a subcommittee under any such rules. I uh, uh, don't uh, question the motives of those who voted for it. Maybe they had what they thought were good reasons, uh, but uh, I personally uh, disagreed with it. Uh, and I think this, that if we set that uh, rule, adopt that rule on any committee, the, the American people would not have confidence in uh, what we did. Uh, because uh, I, I think that we've got to agree in advance, and they got to know in advance that we're going to disclose it, regardless of where it falls and which political party might be involved. We do have some in both political parties, you know. Well, this was not aimed at you, however, was it? Uh, it was uh, some other committees? No, it was at the committee of which I asked to oh, be sent, and uh, yes. Well, Senator, you're also, hit on me the, anyway. yeah. you're also on the Finance Committee as well as the Agriculture Committee. May I ask you, what do you think of uh, Secretary of Agriculture Benson's uh, farm program? I think, I, I agree with Secretary Benson on his farm program, and I think he's trying to do a good job. Uh, I uh, have a great respect for him, and I think that if they'd leave him alone, uh, he would do much toward uh, putting our foreign policy on a sound, business-like basis. Uh, Secretary Benson uh, uh, is, as you know, uh, not endorsing the, the present high 90% supports. Uh, he's more inclined to uh, think that we should adopt the uh, flexible or lower support program. Uh, and uh, I agree with him. Uh, I might say that uh, many of those who are his staunchest critics today, uh, just a few years ago, were the, the strongest advocates of this same program, and that includes Mr. Patton, the president of the Farmers Union, who is now protesting it. Mr. Patton testified before the, com the committee of the Senate at the time they were discussing this pro program, and he was most enthusiastic about it and said it was the most constructive and forward proposal that had ever been made to the American farmers, and it was much better than the rigid 90%. Well, aren't some of these severe critics of uh, Secretary Benson's farm program also your constituents in the state of Delaware? No. Uh, the, uh, now, I don't say that we don't have some in uh, the state of Delaware that disagree with Mr. Benson. Don't get me wrong on that. But uh, the farm organizations in the state of Delaware largely, and I think that's true in New York, New Jersey, or any of the northeastern areas, the two largest farm organizations are the uh, Grange and the Farm Bureau. And both of those organizations are on record as being opposed to the current high 90% support program and more in favor of the lower support program and I think are endorsing Secretary Benson's uh, proposal. You would agree, wouldn't you, Senator, that, uh, that Secretary Benson is in bad with the Western farmers? Yes, I think so. The Western uh, uh, farm bloc, so to speak, has always been, uh, and this is not on political lines, uh, both political parties in that, w in that particular area, the most of them, have been always in favor of the 90% support, and the, high, or, and the only objection they find with that is they want the 100. Now, what many of those critics fail to uh, point out the fact, though, is this, that we already have the program in effect which they're advocating, not the one which Mr. Benson advocates, but the one which they want. And under that program, we have accumulated about $4 billion worth of agriculture commodities. They're in the warehouses all over the country, and short of a war, uh, not one of them have uh, come forward with a constructive proposal as to what we're going to do with them. 
Uh, and that most of the farmers recognize that you just can't continuously keep piling these commodities up in the warehouses and letting them rot. You've got to get them moving in the channels of trade and let the consumers eat them. Well, Senator, Senator, it's mm -hmm. been, it's been uh, assumed, I think, that uh, uh, Secretary Benson is largely responsible for the administration slipping somewhat over the country. But yesterday's elections uh, occurred mostly in urban areas where the farm uh, problem was not at issue. Uh, how do you explain those Democratic victories yesterday, particularly in Jersey? Well, I have read many uh, explanations as to the results of yesterday's election, and I've heard many commentators, uh, some of the country's best brains, explain why it happened. But I think it all boils down to one thing, they had more votes than we did. <laughs> well, as a final question, Senator Williams, uh, you've been a farmer and a grain merchant. Uh, now, if we go ahead with the uh, farm parity program and uh, store up these mounting surpluses, What's going to happen to these surpluses in view of the high cost of living now? Well, under the uh, old program of accumulating them, you remember what happened with the potatoes, we destroyed them. And uh, short of a program of destroying these uh, farm produce, I don't know what we can do with them short of a war. We want to remember today that agricultural prices have declined, yes, but the war is over. If the war was to break out tomorrow, we know that they would be higher uh, by the same token. And agriculture prices today with the exception of beef or one or two maybe commodities, are higher than they were in the pre-Korean period, uh, at just before the war broke out. And uh, I, I'm not, uh, I don't think that the whole country is going to the dough just because we're getting what uh, many people recognize is a healthy readjustment to a peacetime economy. Well, thank you very much, Senator Williams, for being with us tonight. The opinions you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope was Larry Lasseur of the CBS Television News Staff and Kenneth Crawford, National Affairs Editor for Newsweek Magazine. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable John J. Williams, United States Senator from Delaware. <laughs> Every year about this time, the great arena in New York's Madison Square Garden comes alive with color and drama as international society assembles for the National Horse Show. And this year again, here, as in the great horse shows of Paris, Rome, Madrid, and elsewhere, Longines is exclusive official watch for all timing. As the thoroughbreds compete for championship ribbons, the judges consider two factors, their time performance and their beauty. And for exactly the same reason, discriminating people the world over make their choice of a fine watch. Longines, the world's most honored watch, the only watch in history to win for accuracy of performance and beauty of design, 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and highest honors at the great government observatories. The new Longines watches for Christmas giving, now featured by authorized Longines Whitnor jewelers from coast to coast, are conceived in exquisite good taste and manufactured to Longines exacting standard of performance. You'll find a style and a type for every need and every purpose. And yet this Christmas, you may proudly give a Longines watch for as little as $71.50. Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem. Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. Enjoy the four-star playhouse on the CBS television network.